Hello. So um, I work at the University of Leuven and I keep myself busy with the uh, applied security of um, a huge number of uh, applications. And um, I will talk about the uh, security and privacy aspects of uh, several of these that uh, you may encounter. By coincidence, I also have uh, the device that was shown by the, um, uh, the male speaker uh, in front, uh, that came um, a few uh, minutes before me. And um, this is one of the things that I have been uh, researching. So, the administrations and the backend services, in the past years, they have been preparing themselves to make sure that it was able and that it became possible to actually deploy the services that are being deployed today. And um, what that actually means is that uh, in the beginning there was um, very little interaction and very, in, um, very limited yeah, interactivity between the different actors that were in, um, in the field. And, um, so, for instance, I can give you a very practical example. Um, we work at a university, there is also a university hospital, and what they want to do is, uh, they want to make sure that the patient is um, able to uh, fine-tune the uh, file that the hospital keeps on them just before the operation is going to take place. So, a few days before, um, they can um, uh, input the last uh, the most accurate data and the most current information that may be relevant uh, for the operation if they are going to be uh, taken care of a few days later. And um, if you look at it, um, something like five or, set, five or ten years ago it was completely impossible to provide that sort of service to a patient for the simple reason that the backend services with the patient uh, records they were not really accessible, and the, it was impossible to have web services and applications on a higher layer um, that could be um, interacted with by a patient. So when you look at it, um, in the past years, these backend services have been um, web serviceified, so that it has been uh, made more accessible to the um, normal application developers. And today, um, that is exactly what we see. So um, what the healthcare professionals want to do is they want to follow up immediately the uh, patients from their own sites. So instead of using um, the back-end services, they are also using the front-end services, but the front-end is available at the patient side. So the patient is using um, blood um, uh, pressure monitors or uh, devices like uh, the, the small thingy like this and they collect information all the time. They may also be embedded in, in the bodies of the people and um, they collect that sort of information and whenever it is necessary they may trigger an alert for the healthcare professional so that they can intervene or they can fine tune the, the drug, uh, um, um, the medication schemes, etc. So, in order to be able to do that, um, you have a few very basic elements that are very important. And that is the communication mechanisms between these devices and the backend services where they send their information to, but also um, cameras, for instance. Um, I was involved in a project where uh, physicists were um, um, looking at the patients that were doing some exercises at home and to see whether they were doing it properly. And um, if you uh, think about it carefully, you will realize that it comes with a huge number of different um, aspects that you do not want to um, make available to third parties without controlling who is going to have access to it. So basically the information 
that is collected while I'm using this device, I want it to be accessible only to me and to the people I uh, give a mandate to so that they can access it. And the uh, bottom line is that um, it must be made extremely simple so that it is easily usable by the people because normally when a person buys this sort of device they have no idea whatsoever what technology is behind it. But the people expect that it is communicating securely with the web services in the back end for the simple reason that if um, you would make it more complicated it will never be used at all and it will be attacked by uh, adversaries and as soon as a uh, flaw in the communication scheme between this sort of device and the backend services is made public, it gets announced in the press, these things um, get bad publicity and basically they will no longer have any uh, successful business model. So um, it's not only about this sort of devices that uh, monitors the movements of the people, but it's also about um, all the other parameters that can be easily measured by the patient and that the, um, uh, the medical doctor or the um, hospital that is treating uh, these people, um, all the parameters that are relevant for them to fine-tune their diagnosis and to uh, make sure that um, they are able to follow up the patients properly. So there is a lot of information that is being collected completely automatically and you have as a normal user no guarantee whatsoever that they are secured properly. And secure that means that the integrity of the information is protected um, adequately so that um, if it monitors that I have um, uh, completed 500 meters um, or uh, uh, 10 kilometers a day, um, the information that will be transmitted from the device to the backend services, the backend services um, needs to be able to make sure that it's actually accurate data, that there is nobody in the middle um, of the communication that is going to modify the information for the simple reason that otherwise the um, diagnosis or the advice that they are going to give, it will be biased. And um, so you have different sorts of parameters that you have to take care about. The confidentiality of the, of the information. When I take my blood pressure, I do not want that anybody else than my general practitioner and myself get access to the data. I do not want the insurance company where I'm going to um, apply for a um, so the uh, schuld saldo verzekering so the insurance of a um, of a mortgage so that if I drop debt that, that uh, the, mo the money will still be reimbursed etc um, I do not want the uh, doctors from that insurance company to have access to that information automatically even if they know that I'm using this sort of device so I really want to fine tune who has access to this information and who shouldn't have access to it. And that is not a very simple um, mechanism um, that you have to uh, deploy in order to be able to do that. So in the old days, it was a preparation so that this sort of devices could be used sen uh, sensibly. And today, uh, the backend services are available and uh, the services are ready so that they can really be uh, deployed uh, securely. What do you actually want? You want to have real-time bi-directional communications. So when a person is um, being monitored in the house, you want to have the um, healthcare practitioner um, or professional to be able to monitor the information and uh, give feedback immediately. But the basic thing that is important there is the authentication of the people. So the healthcare professional needs to authenticate um, properly in order to um, be able to use the in-house services. And that is not trivial at all. For the simple reason that you need to deploy mandate schemes 
and the devices that you buy off the shelf, they are not really readily available uh, to fine tune um, at that granularity level. So there is always an application that needs to be put on top of it, like the uh, applications that were mentioned uh, by the previous speaker that uh, would give suggestions about uh, the actions that need to be taken care of at a particular moment or after a certain time out. Um, that particular layer is also able to take care of the access control and uh, making sure that only the authorized people are able to use these uh, devices. And that only the authorized people are able to give uh, feedback to the, uh, to the people themselves. So you have a lot of uh, devices at the patient side and each of them needs to be configured in a way that um, it is extremely simple for the end user to operate and all the security and privacy um, enhancements that uh, are going to be uh, provided by these uh, devices. As far as the user is concerned, it should be completely transparent. They shouldn't know anything about it. They just plug in the device, they um, align it with their current infrastructure and it should work completely out of the box, apart from um, the uh, activation of the device. The web services themselves, they are typically provided by the uh, device providers, but what is uh, very important in um, that um, uh, scheme is the interoperability of the different devices, because you have a huge competition. There are many suppliers of very similar of these devices. And as a healthcare practitioner, you do not want to support all of them. You want to have a layer on top of it so that all the features get harmonized as far as the uh, healthcare practitioner is concerned. And this harmonization of all the uh, user interfaces and APIs, that is not very simple either. And um, the real benefits of uh, using all these um, bi-directional uh, devices is that you can just provide immediate follow-up at the time when it is really necessary. So, um, as um, uh, another benefit is that there is no fiddling about uh, possibility with respect to the data that is being acquired. If a person is uh, monitoring his uh, blood pressure or any of, of the other parameters of uh, the person's um, health condition, um, sometimes they try to lie um, towards their general practitioner for whatever reason. I mean, there are very good uh, justified reasons to try to get away with uh, some remarkable um, um, parameter values. But um, while using this sort of devices, it's impossible to get away with it. And um, the general practitioner will be able to ask um, or to determine immediately when there are some specific circumstances that um, triggered some um, remarkable behavior. For instance, high blood pressure or heart uh, rate, etc. And the, the person will not be able to get away with it. Uh, by just uh, monitoring lower values in a, a logbook. So that is one of the huge benefits. So that will improve the quality of the uh, healthcare uh, services themselves because the drugs um, that get prescribed to the person, they can just be fine-tuned according to the real information. So the reliability increases extremely um, um, improves much, a lot while using this sort of devices. But you still have a problem because you do not know whether it is actually the right person who is uh, producing the, uh, the data. And uh, there is some authentication that needs to be uh, done. And um, um, so I'm not only analyzing this sort of things, I'm also analyzing scales, etc. Um, and the advantage of uh, the current technologies is that they do some um, predictions and they are able to predict based on the 
parameters that gets measured from the person to actually identify who it really is. And the information that is being sent out is actually also identifiable. So that um, it really gets very hard, as far as the patient is concerned, to get away with the information and to uh, fine tune it um, according to their liking. But still, it's very important and very hard to make sure that only the right people are able to get access to the data. Um, because all the data gets evacuated immediately from the device. Um, for the very simple reason that if the device fails, it gets replaced immediately by another device. And uh, you do not like to lose all your information. So as soon as a measurement is uh, taken, it is sent immediately to the backend services. And um, you still need to know whether if a device is replaced by another device, whether it is actually providing the data of the right, info, of the right people. So as far as the devices are concerned, you have the device authentication that is important, but you still have um, another problem, and that is getting access to the information. User ID password is a very popular mechanism, but it, is it enough to protect um, privacy sensitive information and healthcare sensitive information by simple user ID and password. As far as hospitals are concerned, the answer is no. So they want to raise the threshold as far as the authentication level is concerned to, for instance, using user ID and password plus an electronic identity uh, card authentication. So that um, it becomes much more complicated to actually try to impersonate the genuine users. What's the basic problem with that? You need to enroll your people. You need to link the um, physical identity with the electronic identity. And um, that is not a very simple mechanism either to do. So getting access to the databases that are online is not a trivial thing to do. Managing the mandates of who is able to access the information is also uh, quite a complicated thing. And the data format standardization, um, that is something which is really going on. And um, um, the disadvantage of uh, having many different suppliers of um, these sorts of tokens, it doesn't um, make that job easy to harmonize all the information uh, formats. So this is basically what I wanted to tell you. If you have any questions, you can shoot later on.